Director of the City of Raleigh Museum, and I'm Becky Holmes with the Friends of the City of Raleigh Museum. While we can't celebrate this in person this year, we're really excited to be able to bring it to you virtually. In collaboration with the Friends of the City of Raleigh Museum, Artist Studio Project, and the Consulate General of Mexico, we welcome you to today's events, and we hope to see you next year in person here at the City of Raleigh Museum. On behalf of the Consul General of Mexico and Raleigh, Claudia Velasco, we would like to welcome all of you to the Day of the Dead Altars of the City of Raleigh Museum. It is a privilege for us to be part of this virtual event. First of all, we would like to thank and recognize Ernest Dollar, Director of City of Raleigh Museum, for his hard work through these several years to make our beautiful traditions known and keep them alive among the community. Your openness and enthusiasm to promote diversity and understanding brings enormous value to build bridges through the powerful tools of education and culture. For us, it is important to promote the Mexican culture and traditions so local community can understand where we come from and the richness of our country. There are many Mexicans, and this is one of them. On November 2nd, Mexico celebrates the Day of the Dead event that honors loved ones who have passed away as a result of the ancient ritual venerations and offerings to the goddess Mictasehuatl, Lady of the Dead, who was the wife of Mictlactecut, Lord of the Underworld. The Spaniards desired to accommodate these festivities with the Catholic celebrations of All Saints Day and All Souls Day. With the Mexican culture's complex fusion of Aztec, Maya and Spanish traditions, death is a merely part of the wider cycle of existence. The Day of the Dead Altar is a community memorial designed to honor those who have been departed before us. It is a place where members of the community can participate by sharing a prayer, lighting a candle, or bringing a memento to place as an offering of their beloved. In 2003, the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization declared Mexican Dia de Muertos as a tangible cultural heritage of humanity. We hope you can enjoy this year's offering exhibit. Thank you. Hola, buenos dias. Uh, my name is Rafael Ostuba. I am the Artistic Director for Artist Studio Project, also the Director of the El Quijote Festival, now in our sixth year. And it gives me great pleasure to once again collaborate with the City of Raleigh Museum and the Friends of the City of Raleigh Museum, along with the Mexican Consulate of Raleigh, to bring to you a wonderful program today um, where we take a closer look to this wonderful tradition, this culture of Dia de los Muertos. Um, we also are celebrating our fourth annual uh, Dia de los Muertos event here at the Core Museum. And what we've done is we've put together a wonderful uh, event where we can kind of dig a little deeper and, and look a little closer uh, into this tradition, give you some, uh, some history, give you a little bit of a background, uh, some of the elements of what makes this wonderful tradition and this, um, this culture so colorful and, and beautiful and why we're so excited to always share this with you each year. Uh, we've invited some good friends uh, from here in the local area of North Carolina to help us with this story. We've got some workshops, uh, we've got some videos uh, behind the scenes, and we've got some music, some how-tos uh, that will be um, shared separately on our website, imquijote.com. But um, also, what we've done is we've invited a very good friend from the city of Mexico. She is a certified tour guide as well as a host of her own television program and her own program online called Mexico with Sitla. And so without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to my good friend, Sitla Soto. Hello, hola Sitla, como estas? Hi, how are you, Rafa? I'm good, how are you? Wonderful. Well, um, very, uh, first of all, let me thank you for taking the opportunity to be with us today. I know that you are currently in the city of Mexico, uh, in the capital. And uh, I was telling our friends a little bit about you, uh, that you're a certified tour guide and that you host your weekly uh, online program. 
but why don't you share a little bit about yourself so that our viewers can learn a little bit more about you. Okay, great, yes. Uh, first of all, thanks you again for having me. Thanks, Rafa. Uh, thanks for having me in this great uh, virtual event. And yes, like you said, uh, I'm based in Mexico City. I'm a certificated tour guide. Uh, let me say my name again, Sitla El Soto. Please call me Sitla because I know it's a very difficult name to pronounce. So I always say to my clients, call me Sitla, please. It's easier. And uh, yes, I give tours, all kind of tours, you know, group tours, private tours for families, for uh, children, uh, running tours, you know, those tours were while you run, I show you the city, uh, tours in museums, uh, I mean, all kinds of tours. I love the city. I love to show people the city, the culture. And also I give uh, some Facebook lives in my webpage. Well, not my webpage, my Facebook page, Mexico with Sitla. So you can watch uh, that show uh, every Thursday night at uh, 8 p.m. And we talk a little bit about everything, uh, you know, the culture, the food, uh, local craft, uh, everything in the city. You know, Mexico has a huge uh, amount of things and culture. And yeah, that's what I do. Wonderful. And I know that a lot of times you, uh, you interview local artists and artisans and, and food, which we love. Uh, and so I know that we've uh, prepared a, a special uh, presentation today. We're going to take a, a closer look uh, to this wonderful tradition, um, Dia de los Muertos, Day of the Dead. And we're so excited about what you've prepared. We've invited some of our local artists to also take part. And I know that you've invited some of your local friends. And we're going to have some videos uh, outside of this video that they can find on our website that gives us an opportunity to talk about the different elements. I know that we're going to do some uh, recipe for uh, the um, Day of the Dead bread, and there's some music, and then there's some face painting. We got a lot of stuff that we're going to cover uh, with this uh, fourth annual uh, festival uh, celebration of Day of the Dead here at the Core Museum. And um, without further ado, I'd like for you to get started. Okay, thank you. Yes, Rafa, uh, we're going to have a little bit of everything related to the Day of the Dead. Uh, this date is closer you know it's november 1st and november 2 so we're going to talk about uh a little bit about the engine uh for hispanic cultures how it starts uh, how we celebrate these days the elements the altars and like you said uh, a recipe for the day of the dead uh, bread or pan de muerto like we like we call it we have some music we have some auditions for papel picado and lots of things that you're gonna love Wonderful. We have some music. We have a lot of stuff. So why don't we go ahead and get started and uh, without further ado. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, sure. Let me let me share my screen. I'm going to share you uh, a presentation. Um, and, and, and I'll show you uh, this overview of the day of the dead. So today uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the day of the dead festivities. So I hope you like this uh, overview. Uh, and uh, let's begin with this uh, in the in the screen you're you're watching the day of the dead uh, the day of the dead sorry and we're going to start with for hispanic background and um, for the ancient mexican cultures uh, when they died they didn't believe in heaven and hell uh, the belief was that when people die they went uh, to this journey, this long journey, where they, were, they have to cross for nine regions uh, in order to arrive uh, to this place called Mitlan, where they finally will find uh, you know, eternal rest for their souls. So that was the belief for, for, for the ancient people in, in, in Mexico or Mesoamerica, like we call it, uh, in that time, in that period. So that's uh, a little bit of how uh, the celebration of the Day of the Dead or the belief for the Day of the Dead uh, start. They didn't believe that they die, they just change. So, but it wasn't the same for everyone. For example, we have here uh, some images. 
I'm going to uh, mention some words in Nahuatl. So if you hear some weird words, uh, don't worry. Those are Nahuatl uh, words. It's Nahuatl language. And I'm going to explain you the meaning, OK? So for example, women who die in labor and warriors went to this place called uh, Tonakali to live with the Lord of the Sun or the God of the Sun called Tonatiu. Uh, so these, these people went straight. They didn't have to cross the nine worlds because they were warriors or women who die in labor. Um, another example we have here Tlaloc. Tlaloc was the God or the Lord of the, of the water and the thunder and the rain. So people who die, um, you know, like with water drowned or, or struck by a lightning, uh, they went to live with this god, Tlaloc, uh, to the Tlalocan. That's, uh, that was the name of the, of the world where he, where he lived. And then another one, this is, this is a tricky word, <laughs> Chichihuacuauco. Wow. <laughs> That's a difficult word. <laughs> well, in this place, uh, especially uh, children or babies, uh, they went there when they die uh, that young. The belief was that in this place, as you are watching the image, uh, there was a tree with this hanging breast uh, uh, where they could be fed with milk. So they went straight to this, to this world. Let me say the word again, <laughs> because I'm impressed that I could say the word Chichihuacuauco. So those are our words, <laughs> our Nahuatl words. Those are not Spanish words. Those yeah, those are, are the native, words. that's the native tongue. Yes, that's the native tongue for Nahuatl people. We have lots of languages here in Mexico. And in the central part of Mexico, uh, people speak or used to speak Nahuatl. We have still some people who speak Nahuatl nowadays so the rest of the people like i mentioned before they have to cross and make this long journey to cross these nine regions to finally arrive with micantecutli he was uh, the god of the dead and he lived in the mictlan and that was the goal uh, to finally find uh, the rest for your tonali. Tonali in Nahuatl language or in English means spirit. So that's another Nahuatl word. So that was kind of the things that they had to do. So that's uh, a little bit of the Hispanic background. And then finally, European people or Spaniards arrived to Mesoamerica or to America. So in order to convert people into the Catholic religion, they uh, allowed to combine the beliefs of the pro-Hispanic people with the Catholic beliefs. You know, you, they have to convert a lot of people and it was easier for them to convert them if they um, just let them uh, do what they like with their festivities. Uh, of course, these festivities also uh, were related with human sacrifices, and that wasn't allowed uh, for the Spaniards and for the Catholics. So they moved uh, all these festivities from the pre-Hispanic people to the 1st of November or the 2 of November. Um, you know, All Saints' Day and All Souls' Day, uh, the Day of the Dead. Uh, so that's how the festivity as we know, as we know it now, a star, you know, with the altars and, and all the things that we are going to watch and see in this, in this presentation. But that was for the Catholic religious. That's, that's when the, this mix between beliefs start, you know, when the Spaniards arrive in the 16th, 16th century, okay? So we have different celebrations in Mexico. Um, here we have one called Chantolo. When the Spaniards arrived, they, uh, especially the, 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 the Catholic priest, uh, when they arrived, they, give the, they gave the, the service, you know, the service at church in Latin. But the indigenous people, they didn't speak Latin. <laughs> they, they, they didn't even speak Spanish. 
very so, few people still still do. I mean, that Latin is not. Uh, I mean, more people speak it now, but we still don't. Um, uh, many people still don't uh, speak Latin. Yeah, but it was uh, the usual at that time, right? So, in this in this region called Huasteca, uh, and let me tell you, Huasteca is uh, a region in, in in an area in Mexico uh, with three or four states on it like Veracruz State, Hidalgo State, San Luis Potosí State. Uh, in the screen, we're watching uh, the celebration uh, in Hidalgo State. So you can watch the woman if she's dressing with the traditional costume, the traditional uh, dress that they wear. She's praying. Uh, and like I said, they couldn't mention, they couldn't say this word Santorum, which means uh, something like saints of all saints. So they couldn't say Santorum. So they changed the word, the word Santorum for Shantolo, which is more like Nahuatl. So that's why this festivity is called Shantolo. Shantolo is Santorum, saint of all saints. So this is one of the festivities. Another one is in Hanitzio Island. Uh, Hanitzio is uh, literally a small island in the middle of the Lake of Pascuaro in Michoacan state. And uh, many people think that now it's very touristic because uh, many people visit this, this place, this island, uh, during the day of the Dead festivities. But um, for the people in the island and people in, in, in Canizio Island, they spent uh, the whole night in the graveyard. And as you can see in the image, People celebrate, people take food, people take music. We're going to talk about music. Uh, and, and as you're watching, they are pure joy. They are happy. They're not sad because they are waiting for the loved ones. They are coming back to, to hang out with them, to, to talk with them, to stay with them. So that's the image that we have. Um, that's there are some elements, uh, special elements, uh, depending on the area of, 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 of the country. And for example, we can watch in the, in the right side of the image, uh, people fishing, because it's a lake. So usually in the altars in this area, you will find uh, fishes and dogs because they used to hunt and they used to, uh, you know, have fish. So. And that's one of the things that makes uh, this celebration, this tradition so different and so wonderful is that, um, you know, it's a celebration, right? You're celebrating life. You're, you're celebrating the, the, our ancestors, those that have left us. But, but on this day, they come back. They're with us. And so we, it's a happy time. Um, unlike what happens here in the West or happens here in, in, in the United States, uh, where, um, you know, we look at death a little bit differently. We look at uh, the way that our ancestors has passed by as a somber thing, something that's, you know, we're sad about. Uh, this is uh, full of color. Uh, it's wonderful. And there's music. It's a, it's, a, it's a big celebration. But I think that that's one of the things that makes it so, uh, so special as well. Yeah, uh, you're right, Rafa. Uh, I know death is, is, is something sad. Uh, and and uh, you don't want th that your loved ones passed away, but here, like I said, since the pre-Hispanic times, we didn't believe. Of these people, didn't believe in death. They believe that they change. They just cross from one world to another. So here, as you said, with the celebrations, we are waiting for them. We are happy because they are coming again. Each year they are coming with us and they celebrate life with us. So yeah, you're right. Uh, these festivities are really, really full of joy and of colors and food and music. And it's, 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 it's amazing. And, and it's really beautiful when you go to these small towns, when you visit these small towns uh, with these uh, old traditions. So that's what I'm uh, showing you in these images, um, things that you won't see, you know, in the big cities. So we talk about music. You're watching a mariachi in a graveyard, <laughs> and that's something that you will watch 
uh, very much near uh, in, in, in the graveyards in, in Mexico City, well, in Mexico. So people take music for the loved ones because they love music and, and mariachi is something uh, very traditional. And by the way, let me tell you one of these videos that you talk about in uh, I am el, 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 uh, I am el We're gonna have this extraordinary musician playing the weeping woman song or La Llorona. That, yeah, that, and know, I'm playing a little bit of that right now. People can probably hear a little bit of that right now. And we're gonna show you the video later, but uh, what you're listening to right now is Le Larry Bellorin and Agustin Gonzalez, and they're playing um, from the Core Museum, they're, they're playing La Llorona or The Weeping Woman. Yes, that's one of the most beautiful and traditional songs uh, for the Day of the Dead festivities. So don't miss that because it's gonna be beautiful. So music is, is really, really important. And of course, we cannot leave the celebrations in Mexico City, we like things in big so uh during the uh october during october uh we're gonna have these big celebrations the, these big parades we have the first one alebrijes parade alebrijes uh, are these fantastic creatures which are uh very traditional also for the day of the dead um, that's one of the parades uh, and then we have another big parade and, and really fun and, and, and people, uh, you know, participate. All of you can participate. If you come to Mexico City during these dates and you say, oh, I want to participate in the festival, in the Katrina's festival, you can get the makeup and participate in the, in the, in the festival. It is actually a contest. So the best Katrina wins. So this is another, uh, uh, another thing that we do in, in Mexico City. And the biggest uh, parade is the Day of the Dead parade, also in October. As you can see, a lot of, pe a lot of people come to see the, the parade. And here, uh, well, we're gonna see all the um, imagination of the artist and, and uh, lots of Katrinas also, lots of skulls, and, and many people celebrating the death and, oh, of course, life. So and what is the what Katrina? What is the Katrina? Well, many people relate Katrina with the Day of the Dead because she's a skull, right? But it has nothing to do with the Day of the Dead. Uh, Katrina uh, was the name given by uh, Diego Rivera, you know, this uh, uh, famous, famous painter in famous Mexico. Famous artist. Yeah, this, this huge artist in Mexico. He painted Katrina in one of his murals, uh, but Katrina uh, was made or created by this uh, journalist called Jose Luis Posadas. He lived in the 19th century and he was, uh, he criticized a lot the government of that time. So he made this image of this uh, girl with the makeup, with this skull dressing, you know, like with this big dress and the hat and, and she was very elegant but she was criticizing these mexican people who wanted to believe that like, that they were like european people you know they dressed like european people but they were starving because they didn't have the resources and the money like european people so the original name for katrina is something like chickpea skull or in Spanish, Calavera Garbancera. He was criticizing these people who changed um, the Mexican corn for European chickpeas. So that's the real story of Katrina. Now, Katrina is very famous because of Diego Rivera, of course, and because she's a skull. And, 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 and let's be honest, it's really fun to have the makeup of Katrina <laughs> for the day yeah, of the day. Most definitely. Yeah, so that's the history of Katrina. I'm sorry if uh, I've disappointed some people <laughs> with, <laughs> with the real story of Katrina. That's right. And then, of course, we mentioned already the altars, uh, these tables that uh, families and people put on their homes uh, 
with all these important and different uh, elements. And as you can see in the image, we have, for example, some photos of the people who passed away, of their families. You know, you can put photos of your, uh, your, grandfa uh, your grandfather, your children, your uh, sisters, your brothers. Anyway, the photo of uh, anyone that you want. Uh, some people uh, put, for example, toys for children, candies, um, their favorite food, their favorite drink. You will, you will find altars with tequila or mezcal or beers or, I don't know, coffee, chocolate, hot chocolate, different elements. We're going to speak about some of the main elements in the, in the, in the altars. And by the way, this year we're going to have in the core museum, well, we have here different uh, designs for the altars. As you can see, all depends on in your imagination, but usually they are, as you can watch, also very colorful and very full of life because this is about life, not about death. So we have here a photo of uh, the altar that Leti, Leti Alvarez is, is, is doing this year for the Core Museum. You will be able to visit this, uh, this, this altar. Please don't miss it. And you will find uh, the altar and a video uh, of, of how uh, she will make this, 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 this altar for the Day of the Dead in the Core Museum. Yeah, and the wonderful thing about what we do at the Core Museum is because it's connected with the uh, um, El Quijote Festival, each year there's a literary figure that is highlighted. Um, this year, the literary figure is Cervantes. So you'll, you'll be able to go there and you'll be able to see a few uh, special things like what you were saying that were special uh, or unique to Cer Miguel de Cervantes Saavedra, um, who is, of course, the famous writer, Spanish writer of Don Quixote. So um, Leti has always done a great job, and we're so so happy that she's collaborating with us once again. Um, we also have uh, Vicky Carrillo, and we were talking earlier about the um, the face painting, right? And so Vicky Carrillo and um, has always helped us with her ballet folklorico, uh, and she's going to talk to us about uh, how you can go about uh, uh, painting your face and getting things ready for La Calaveras, right? Um, uh, we, that's one of the favorite things that when people come out to the Core Museum, they see uh, the many families and children that come out and uh, paint their faces uh, like a calavera, like a Catrina, right? So that's a wonderful thing as well. Like this one in the, in the, in the photo, right? Perfect, yeah, that's a great, uh, there's uh, Vicky and one of her students, um, and uh, they, uh, they have prepared a nice video for us, and you can go and check that out on our website, imquijote.com, um, to learn more about how you can go about doing that. I will mention that um, her favorite color is morado or purple, so purple. that's why she, she has been painted uh, in that color and wonderful. And it looks beautiful. Uh, it's, it's uh, I mean, the makeup, this kind of, of makeup is not like the most traditional thing in Mexico, but it's really fun and all the people get the makeup of Katrina. And the wonderful thing about um, uh, what Vicky does is that each year, everything that you see there, uh, the dresses, the headpieces uh, are made by her. They're, yeah. they're made by hand and they're made by her and, 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 her, um, and her friends. And... Uh, and the people that, uh, that work with her group. And she teaches this wonderful culture and she teaches the children how to dance and how to celebrate. It's a wonderful uh, job that she does with the community and with, this, and with the children and with the families. And a lot of the families that are part of her group are not Latino, they're uh, American. So that's a wonderful thing as well that we're seeing more and more that families are uh, you know, uh, adapting and, and and embracing such a wonderful culture. Yeah, and it's beautiful. Actually, the dress that she's wearing with uh, with her daughter there, that's a traditional It's her, one dress. of her students, one of her students. Oh, one of her students. That's a traditional dress from Chiapas, in Chiapas state. So you see all this combination and all this culture and like you said, embrace it because it's beautiful. So, 
Let's go to the next slide. And finally, let's talk about these elements that we already mentioned in the altar. So there are some elements that should be in the altar. Uh, the rest is up to you. But let's start with these examples. For example, water. Uh, you have to have uh, uh, a glass of water always in the altar. What's the meaning of water? Water is the fountain of life. Water means in, in many cultures, uh, pureness, uh, the pureness of the soul. And, and, and water is also to, to, for, the, for the thirsty uh, people who come to visit, right? They take a long journey to arrive here with us, so they are thirsty, so they need water. And that's why the water should be in the altar. So always put a, a glass of water in your altar, always. It doesn't matter that they didn't drink water. <laughs> they will be thirsty because of this long journey. So that's one of the elements. Another one is salt. Try to put salt also uh, in, your, in, your, um, in your altar, in your offering, because salt is another element of purification. And salt was very important in pre-Hispanic times too. Uh, and also it works like uh, to preserve the body of, of these uh, people who are visiting you because they took a long journey. So they need to preserve their bodies. Uh, I mean, their bodies because, because of course they, they, they already passed away. But they need to preserve their, their bodies uh, in order to arrive and, and, and then go back to the place that they, that they came from right? So that's another uh, important element for the altars. Then we have candles, of course. We cannot miss candles always in, the, in, 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 this, um, in these altars and, of course, uh, candles in the, in the graveyards. We already saw some e images of these graveyards full of candles. And in pre-Hispanic times, again, uh, the ancient cultures uh, use this piece of wood called ocote, uh, and it was easy to burn. That's why they use it. When the Spaniards arrived, they started to use candles, uh, and the flame means the faith and the hope of, of these people who comes with us and also for us. Uh, candles are also a guide for their soul, for the souls. You know, you put candles on the way to light up the path, the path that, they, that, they, um, that they walk on their way. Also, in some cultures here in Mexico, uh, candles are the number of uh, loved ones that passed away. So you put the number of, of, of your people in the, in the, in the altar, and, and that's the number of the candles that you will place in the altar. So also, if you um, put the candles like in a, in a cross, you know, with the shape of cross, uh, it means the four point, uh, cardinal points, and that will show the way to these people who passed away. So that's, uh, these, the, the candles, uh, they have different meanings depending on the area or depending on also your beliefs. So candles are really, really important also. We have this uh, also um, element called copal. Copal is a, a, a vegetal resin, or how do you say resin? Yeah, it's resin, like is it, it's a root, no? Yeah, it is like a root, yes. Uh, from some trees here in Mexico, and they have a, a special scent. So this copal uh, cleans the air from bad spirits, and, 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 and they clean the air to, to the soul, for the souls that are coming to visit us. So when they come back to our homes, they come safe, safely. So that's, that's the meaning of, of copal. The copal will clean the air and, 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 and clean uh, this air from bad spirits. So it's, it's, really it's, um, and it's amazing to me that a lot of these elements uh, cross over to a lot of different cultures a lot of different um, ethnic groups and a lot of different religions because, you know, in, in the Catholic religion, uh, they use frankincense, right, when they're doing that. And then 
in the Muslim uh, religion, they use incense. So there's a lot of different types of, um, and then, you know, we have, uh, you know, folks that do what they call the smudging, right, with, with sage and different ways of, you know, clearing the air. So a lot of these elements that are being used, um, even though they started very, very early, um, have somehow been, um, you know, crossed over to other, other religions. And I think a lot of that has to do with back in that time having, you know, the, the influence of the, of the Spanish, of the indigenous people, even, you know, the, the, you know, folks, the Moors and, and different in, individuals that were coming into the, into the equation there. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, the the essence of this uh, of these uh, elements of these materials of these roots is is really important. You know, it's it's it's, it's funny, uh, and 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 you know that there is uh, an altar or an offering because of the smell. You cross in front of these altars, and you are oh, there's an altar here because you have the smell. Another element with the smell is Sempasuchil. That's the name in Nahuatl. I, I think you know it like Marigold. But here in Mexico, we know it as Sempasuchil. Sempasuchil in Nahuatl language means flower of 20 petals, you know, because it has many of them. And the meaning of, uh, the meaning of this flower by tradition uh, says the, that the bright colors of this Sempasuchil mark, uh, will mark the way for the dead, uh, the, the, the way that they should follow in order to find their homes uh, and their, their people, their family. Uh, also, uh, we believe that marigolds or Sempasuchil uh, kept or, 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 yeah, keep the warm of the sun because of the color. Uh, indigenous people used to believe that they look like the sun. So they are warm like the sun. So that's a good thing also for, for, for our loved ones. And the scent uh, of the flower also guides them. In some places, uh, in Mexico, for example, in graveyards, people make these, uh, you know, like carpets uh, made with, with, with these flowers. Uh, for the spirits they have to follow these carpets also in order to find their families it's so, like follow the yellow brick road but but of marigold <laughs> yeah they follow the yellow road yes and of the marigold one of one of the wonderful things that we we do every year at the um at the core museum and one of the the kind of crafts that we do is we make these wonderful big uh you know tissue paper marigolds and it's always great to see the families and the children kind of, you know, uh, do the big uh, marigolds and cut it up. And I love the way that the kids love it. And they put it on their wrist and they put it in their hair and it's so beautiful. Um, and you see the people walking because we typically do things on like on a first Friday and you see folks walking downtown Raleigh with the big marigolds with two or three of them. And people are always asking, where'd you see that? Where'd you get that? And it's always nice to know that uh, at the Core Museum, it's one of the favorite uh, craft table uh, events that we do each year. It's, it's really a lot of fun. It's very pretty as well. It sounds wonderful. It's, uh, it sounds beautiful because this, this uh, flower is so beautiful. You know, fields in here around the city, I mean, not in the city, but around the, field, the city, they are full of this uh, yellow, orange, uh, colorful uh, flowers. We have uh, another flower here, also Sempasuchil, but that one is purple. So that's not uh, very traditional, but many people also use it for the, for the, for the altars. But the most traditional one is marigold. So yeah, it's beautiful to watch this, you know, in the markets, in the streets, people buy uh, marigolds for their homes. And it's, it's definitely beautiful. So everybody wants to have marigolds on their, at their homes. So another element, calaveritas de azúcar. Uh, that's in Spanish. We call it sugar skull, and uh, I think you call it uh, sugar skull in English, right? Yep. So 
as we mentioned before, this is related to human sacrifices uh, from pre-Hispanic times. The, the sugar skull reminds uh, that we are going to die, to die someday, all of us. So usually you put this uh, sugar skulls uh, in your altar and in the forehead of the sugar skull will have the name of these people that pass away. Also, we have this tradition. Uh, yeah, we, we know it's like a joke, but I can give you, for example, a sugar skull as a present also with your name to remind you that we are going to die no matter what. <laughs> so uh, sugar skulls also are also uh, for, 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 for children. You know, it's like a candy. They don't need it anymore. Uh, now we have uh, this is this uh, candies made of different uh, ingredients like chocolate and they eat those <laughs> but not the sugar skull anymore but this technique in Mexico you know the sugar skull is called uh, alfeñique that's how we call the technique of doing these sugar skulls so that's another very important element so uh, don't get angry if I give you a sugar skull with your name on it. <laughs> last year, last year for the altar, we worked with um, with our good friends over at Maracas uh, uh, Montessori School. A shout out to our friends over in Maracas, and their their uh, their students uh, made the skulls out of uh, out of large uh, little rocks, and they were wonderful. And these were all handmade by the by the children. You know, all of them were in the age group of maybe about four years old, all the way to about eight years old, somewhere in that in that um, in that age group. And it was wonderful to see all of these wonderful rocks uh, all decorated, and 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 it's just it, it it's just wonderful to see the work that um, that Leti Alvarez and and that we were able to do with the Core Museum here because it's really a family event. Oh, that sounds, that sounds uh, beautiful and wonderful, and I hope to see it someday. I would love to visit the Core Museum and see all these things that you do with these traditions. And then we have another very important element and, 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 and a delicious one. <laughs> we start gaining weight uh, on October with this bread. <laughs> the now day we're, now we're bread. into my, the things that make me happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, also me. <laughs> so, Pan de Muerto or the Day of the Dead Breath. Uh, someone asked me some, 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 some years ago, some tourist asked me, are they really made of dead? And I was like, no, <laughs> it's just for the festivity. So, uh, the church uh, represents this bread as the body of Jesus Christ, right? And it represents fraternity. And um, it's something like, how you call it, the communion wafer? Communion. Yeah, yeah, it's something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, we already spoke about human sacrifices. Um, the Spaniards didn't allow that uh, once they arrived here. So they have this idea of making this bread uh, with the shape of a heart. So they, the first breath for the Day of the Dead was a uh, bread with the shape of a heart and uh, with red sugar, you know, <laughs> to remind them these sacrifices that they made. Now, the shape of this bread that we know uh, nowadays is different. As you can see, it's like a circle. Uh, that circle is representing eternity, life and death, always together, okay? The small ball in the top of the bread represents the skull, of course, of the sacrifices. And this cross uh, along the bread represents, uh, you know, the arms and the legs of these uh, sacrificed people. We call it canillas in Spanish. But that re is a representation of the legs and the arms. And uh, in, this, uh, in this part, uh, I, would like, I would like to, um, to visit, uh, again, the webpage of IamTheQuixote.com because we're going to have this friend of mine, Daniela Canizal. She's going to show you how to make the original and traditional 
a Day of the Dead bread. You know, we're going to give you the recipe with all the ingredients and how to make your bread because, believe me, the bread is delicious. It has it really nothing is. to do with the sacrifices anymore. <laughs> every <laughs> every year, really delicious. every year we always uh, are very fortunate to be able to partner with a lot of the local bakeries. And they usually bring, uh, we're able to bring pan de muertos and all the wonderful sugary breads and all the good stuff. And we always um, are able to uh, uh, collaborate with folks to help us do the, the chocolate caliente, right? Which is my favorite drink. Oh, uh, I do a whole thing wonderful. based on chocolate caliente, which is hot chocolate. So we usually have uh, hot chocolate and we have pan de muertos and other and other types of, um, of of sugary treats, and that's always a big hit, and 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 people just absolutely love it. It's always great for folks. So I would encourage folks to go to their local bakery, uh, Latino bakery, and you can order. But you have to order because they only make it like during this time. So you have to order ahead of time to get it. Yeah. And if you're not gonna um, order it, then check out our video because they, that's something that you could do. Uh, that's family friendly. You could do it with your kids. And we're going to give you the recipe. Uh, and Caracolas uh, has done that step by step for us in the video. And so we're excited about that. So go to our website and check that out. Yeah, she's going to give you the whole recipe and how to make a bread of that. And it's pretty easy, believe me. And what was the name of, the, of, the, of your friend that uh, helped us with the recipe again? Oh, Daniela Canizal. She is from Caracolas Lab Project. Uh, she makes all kinds of Mexican recipes, all kinds of bread, uh, Mexican bread. And uh, she has uh, also uh, on her um, Facebook page, she also gave uh, these give this workshops. Uh, last, a uh, couple of weeks ago, she gave uh, the, the, the recipe for, for, for the Day of the Dead bread. So we'll put that information so folks can check that out as well. Thanks so much. Uh, for, for helping us out with that. Talking about the bread, there in Mexico, there are different kinds and styles of bread for the Day of the Dead. It's not just the traditional. Here in the slide, here in these photos, we can watch, we can see different breads. For example, these are from Oaxaca State. Um, this one on the left is called pan de cazuela. Uh, this bread is made like a, how, how do you say pot in a pot? Yeah, the like if you is, make uh, the bread in the pot. That's the shape, and well, that's the meaning of pan de cazuela. Okay, and as you can see, it has faces of saints and virgins. We have here La Virgen de Guadalupe, which is uh, very famous and traditional here. We have the face of Jesus Christ here. We have an angel here. We have another virgin here. So that's the traditional thing on this, on, on this kind of bread. On the right side, we have another one. Uh, this is like an embroidery in the bread. Really beautiful. It's gorgeous. Also, this, this, this kind of bread is just for the Day of the Dead, a celebration. We have another one. This one has also the, the, you know, the traditional bread with sugar, but it's black. Uh, the black part of the, of the, of the bread is toto mostly, uh, the ashes of toto mostly. What is toto mostly? Um, corn husk, you know, that, that corn husk to, for, the, for the tamales. Well, here in Mexico, in some areas, we burn those uh, corn husk and we, uh, use the ashes for the bread. It has sugar and is the same bread as the traditional one, but with the ashes of this corn husk. Uh, the name Toto Mosle is the Nahuatl name for corn husk. So, and corn is uh, very important to the uh, Mexican culture. It, uh, it's one of the, I, you almost see it everywhere. I mean, corn is super, super important for a lot of different reasons. Yeah, yeah. Corn is very important uh, in, in Mexico for, for all the food and many other uses, as you can see in, the, in this bread, right? Mm -hmm. So another one that I want to show you is uh, this bread, this kind of bread called golletes. They look like 
donuts. And they have sugar, also colored sugar. Uh, and usually you will see this kind of bread like hanging in the altars. They will put the, this, these goyetes in the altars, but hanging. You know, you will see the altar and one goyete on each side of the, of the altar. And that's, that's another uh, kind of bread. We have lots. I have a huge list of, of, of this uh, bread that people made for, for the Day of the Dead festivities, but we can show it all. But this is some, so these are some of them. This is another one. This is from a place called Acámbaro in Guanajuato State. GTO means Guanajuato. This is, that's the state of Mexico. And, and you know, in Guanajuato, they do the best festival ever, right? Because they do El Festival del Quixote, or oh, Festival that's wonderful. Cervantino, right? So that's yeah, very the, near and dear to my heart. <laughs> yeah, the Cervantino, the best festival in Mexico. So this bread that you're watching, that small point, red point in the, in the middle of the bread, that's the heart. Uh, and that means that this, uh, this bread is representing uh, grown-ups, adults, people who were sacrificed. They have this small point, red point, which is representing the heart. You know, talking about pre-Hispanic times and human sacrifices, well, that's the meaning of this small red uh, spot in the middle of the bread. That's another kind. And finally, we arrive to the star of our uh, uh, altars and offerings uh, you can miss all the rest of the elements but not papel picado papel picado is really really important um, it has also a very deep um, significance uh, in the altar um, we already talked about the nine regions right that people should cross when when they want to arrive to the Mictlan. So one of these worlds, uh, I guess, is, I think is the second one. They have to cross this world where uh, two mountains were waiting for them. And when they try to cross, when the spirit tried to cross, the mountains will just close and don't let them, uh, you know, cross. So the paper, uh, when, when the paper move with, uh, with the wind, the, paper, the, uh, the papel picado means wind. So when this paper moves with the wind, they, uh, let's say they cheered on uh, these two mountains uh, because they believed the paper was the spirit that wanted to cross. So that was the moment when these mountains, uh, you know, uh, collide together. Uh, the spirit could cross because the the the, the bread the uh, I'm sorry the, the papel picado cheated uh, these two mountains. That's the meaning of the of the papel picado, the wind will, that will help this spirit to cross these two mountains. Um, in indigenous times, they use papel amate, not papel. Uh, we know it as papel de China because it was brought from China. But in, in pre-Hispanic times, they use amate. Uh, we don't use amate anymore because amate is made from, from, from the trees and, 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 and it's kind of difficult to, to find amate paper. So we now use this, uh, this papel picado. Tissue paper. Papel de China, as we know the papel. And, um, you know, it has different images on it. Usually skulls, uh, the Katrina is very popular. Uh, also, the Day of the Dead bread, candles, you know, many designs, many colors, and, 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 and uh, it's bright, it's colorful, and it's something that you should have on your altar or uh, your offerings for your loved ones. Also, because it's, it's festivity, you know, it's happiness, it's joy. That's why the colors of the, of the papel picado. And, and papel picado um, is not just for Day of the Dead. I mean, you can almost never go to a fiesta or a festival, uh, anything that has to do with the Mexican culture, that you don't see papel picado. Papel picado is always there. Uh, it just, it's very festive. <laughs> it's very representative. And um, 
we have a, it's a it's a dying uh, craft. These are all done by hand, um, yeah. and then now uh, folks can buy it. You know, where they're made by uh, by machines or they're made in in different parts of the country. And uh, but in Mexico, um, they're made by hand, and there's it seems like it's a craft that's being lost, which is a shame because it's it's very labor intensive. It requires a lot of creativity, um, and uh, just like most things, you know, um, we undervalue the 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 importance and the craft of artisans. And uh, we have a, a a video that we're going to show about that as well, right? Yeah, we have some local craftsmen and women, some musicians that will show you how. Well, they have a workshop on how to make pa papel picado with scissors. It's pretty easy. And, and you won't believe what you will have, uh, what you will do after you finish. It's beautiful. But also, as you said, it's, uh, it's, a, a, it's a craft that requires a lot of work. It's made by hand, as you can watch in the, in the, in the image. Um, you can see all the, all the tools that they use. These are made by hand too. And, and they work many, many, many hours to get these kinds of designs, you know? So yeah, we're gonna have uh, this video where uh, these people from Artesanías de Papel in Xochimilco, that's the name, uh, a video where they are going to show you, uh, they are going to show you how to make papel picado, the meaning of papel picado for the Day of the Dead. And um, you can follow them. They also give workshops. And also you can buy them some papel picado because they have some great designs, as you said, Rafa, for many festivities like uh, birthday parties, uh, weddings. I think you have Sweet Sixteen. In, in, Sweet in, Sixteen, in, 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 quinceañeras. Over in, here is Sweet, uh, yeah, uh, Sweet Sixteen, but obviously in Latino communities, quinceañeras. Quinceañeras also. So uh, it's really pretty when you go into a party and you see, oh, wow, all these colorful, uh, colorful papers hanging in, 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 in the parties, you know? So we're going to have this video with these uh, artisans, um, and they are going to show, uh, show you how to make paper. This papel picado. Wonderful. And that's it. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope uh, you enjoy uh, this small presentation, this overview, this uh, closer look to the, to the Day of the Dead. I want to thank you, uh, Rafa, for the opportunity. Thanks to the uh, City of Raleigh Museum. Thanks to the Artist Studio Project. Thanks also to uh, IamQuixote.com. Um, and thank you all for giving me this opportunity. I really enjoy it and I hope you enjoy it too. Yeah, we also want to thank thank you for taking the time uh, and to share your wonderful culture. Um, I encourage all of our viewers to check you out. Go, you know, you have a Facebook page. You have different ways that you can contact Titla. Uh, and if you're ever in Mexico and you want a great personal tour, or if you have a group of folks that um, that you want to learn a little bit more about Mexico, uh, any part of uh, Mexico, it doesn't matter if it's the city of, of Mexico or it's another part of the of the country, uh, look her up. We're gonna put her information on the bottom there so you can get to know her. She's bilingual, she speaks Spanish, English. She has a lot of good friends, a lot of artisan friends, a lot of restaurant friends, and she knows a lot. And uh, we're so fortunate to be able to, to have you share this wonderful culture, give us that closer look to this wonderful tradition. And I know that the CORE Museum, on behalf of the CORE Museum, also the, um, the Mexican consulate, and everyone, we wanna say thank you to you for taking the time to put this together. I wanna to encourage everyone to uh, check out uh, the links that we have um, and then also uh, visit the videos that we have of the artisans and the how-tos and, and all of that. And I think what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna, we're gonna leave watching um, a video of our good friends, Larry, Bellorin and also Agustin um, Gonzalez, and they're gonna they're gonna take us home with uh, La Llorona, the weeping weeping woman.
What do you think about that? Oh, that sounds wonderful. Let's hear them. Wonderful. What, uh, thank you once again to the Friends of the Core Museum. I hope everybody has a wonderful uh, Dia de los Muertos. Remember to check out all the additional videos and stuff that we have at imquijote.com. Also, the stuff that they have at the, um, the Core Museum and also at the Friends of the Core Museum social uh, media pages as well. So without further ado, thank you once again, Sitla, for being with us. And we leave you with La Llorona. Thank you very much. Have a happy Day of the Dead, people. Bye.